Rug piercings, pros, cons, advantages, disadvantages from a piercer. That's me. Coming up right now. For those that are new to the channel, my name is Davo. I'm a professional piercer and have been since 1994. I'm the owner and operator of the Axiom Body Piercing Studio here in Des Moines, Iowa. So when I talked, and we're located inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo, um, when I talk to you about these things, especially rook piercings, I am basically talking to you on the level of an expert. I have been doing these off and on for over, well, close to 25 years. I've helped many people heal through the process. Um, and I have a basic understanding of these things. So what I do with these is we take five pros, five cons, five advantages, five disadvantages, and go through them in detail um, to give you kind of an educated idea of whether or not this piercing is going to be good for you, if it's the one that you need to get. Because I'm a positive person, I like to think positivity, that glass is a little under half full. Uh, we're going to start with the pros. Number one. This piercing, if done correctly, can fit really, really well into the ear. It can almost feel like it's naturally meant to be there. Um, if you have an expert, if the piercer that you're getting has the expertise to make it look like it belongs, like it fits into the natural flow of the ear, um, it can kind of follow that same line that the helix flap follows. Uh, this also makes it pretty acceptable for groupings with other style of piercings around the area to give you kind of a unique look to your ear. Number two, pretty quick healer. Usually heals out in about eight to six, or eight to 12 weeks. Uh, not extremely promatic, but I'll go into that a little bit later. It does take a little bit of babying more than other piercings, but you should always baby your piercings regardless. You gotta show them that love. Gotta show them love, but not with your fingers. So this piercing like fairly easy. Um, if you follow the aftercare instructions, take care of it properly. Don't take care of it. Uh, you know, don't do one of those things where you take care of it for a couple days and go, oh, it's healed. I'm gonna leave it alone. They can heal usually without many issues at all. <clears throat> Number three, not a common piercing. This piercing is, I would say, on the more unique side of ear piercings. I have not done a great number of them over the years. Um, as far, by comparison to let's say like, uh, I don't know, navel piercings, nostril piercings, earlobe piercings. Uh, they're probably at that same level of, I like probably below the trachis, but above the conch. Probably just slightly below the helix at this point, or and definitely below outer ear cartilage piercings. They're one of those piercings that you're not going to run into eight people on one day that have. It's a, it's not extremely unusual. It's not experimental, but it's not one of those piercings that's very common. So that moves us on to number four. Has a long history of healing with little or no issues. This is not an experimental piercing. This is not something I came up with on my own. This piercing has been healed out by a lot of people over the last, I would say, roughly 20 or 30 years. Um, it's never hit like a, a level of popularity as maybe, say, other piercings have. But at the same time, it has a long history of not having issues and being a fairly easy heal. Number five, the last of the pros, the last of the advantages. There is a large variety of jewelry options out there for this particular piercing. Though, and I'll get into this later, you're kind of stuck in two different types, and that's either the curved or the circular. Um, the thing is, is those two particular style of jewelry have been around for an extremely long time, since the beginning of piercing. So there's a lot of different style shapes and etc. that you can work with and get put in there after the piercing heals. Okay, now that we've gone through the disadvantages, the advantages, the pros, the positive, it's time to go on to the dark side and talk about the disadvantages. Number one. You need to isolate this piercing. Uh, any ear piercing, I don't care where it's at on your ear, including lobes, need to be kept away from anything that is going to be abusive, constrictive, block the flow of oxygen, or contaminate the area. Now, even though your piercing may be located here, 
any type of contamination in the general area could lead to an infection. Meaning, sunglasses could cause an infection if you don't clean them on a regular basis. Earbuds, headphones, telephones, of course, anything that comes in contact with it. If you're involved in any sporting activities that require you to wear a helmet, headgear, or anything like that, or maybe you go out to the rifle range and you shoot, and you wear headphones over to, can to block, out the, uh, block out the noise, or you work in the live music industry, you are probably going to not want to get this piercing, um, or at least make sure that those type of activities are not going on when you get it done. The other thing is, is you cannot sleep on this piercing while it's healing. Leave it alone, leave it isolated, and baby it. Just put it in the forbidden zone and let it stay there. Number two, you are limited by a um, Limited on the jewelry style that it can be initially pierced with, um, and even afterwards, you're kind of stuck into this two different styles. Either circular rings, if you have the right anatomy for it, or the curved barbells with the two balls that are kind of shaped like a banana. Like a banana. Um, the good news is, as I mentioned earlier, there's a extremely large variety of different styles, types, shapes, etc., in those particular two styles because they have been with the body piercing industry since the beginning and they've innovated quite a bit on them. So you do have a very wide variety of things to put in there, but you are kind of constricted to those two types. That said, I have had one client where because of the shape of her ear and the way that ridge came down, it almost came down like that where we could wear, she could wear a labray stud in. She is the unique one. That's not always the case. A lot of times, any straight jewelry, even in a heeled piercing, can cause issues when you switch from curved to straight because it puts so much pressure on the piercing and it's also going to look kind of weird because of the, you know, if it's gemmed or anything. Anyway, um, number three. You cannot remove this jewelry during the healing process, and are, I wouldn't suggest removing it for any extended period of time, um, even after it heals. Uh, so, if you're involved in any type of sporting activity, uh, high school type things, college, etc., in which you are going to be required to remove this jewelry, wait until you get done doing that stuff. Because taking it out, putting it back in, taking it out, putting it back in, taking it out, putting it back in, causes a couple different problems. The first one being that how you can't really control how clean that jewelry is or the package that you keep it in. So there's always a possibility of infection. The second one being it could close up and you can't get the jewelry back in. And that one probably sucks the most. That, I guess infection would kind of suck too. But... The third thing is that you can damage the piercing by constantly taking jewelry in and out. That tunnel of tissue that forms around the jewelry, which is the piercing itself, can sometimes be a bit fragile, especially in that first couple of years. So constantly moving and re taking jewelry out, putting it back, taking it out, putting it back, taking it back, putting it back, it can cause damage to the piercing itself, which could restart the healing, in fact, the healing process and you may not be aware of it, which could lead to an infection or other problem, including scarring, etc. So, if you're involved in an activity where they're going to require you to take this out for safety reasons or other nonsensical, who knows what the heck they're talking about, situations, wait till after you're done with those type of activities until, uh, and then get it pierced. It's just better. Number four, anatomy. Not everyone has the anatomy to do this piercing. I would say roughly about 10% of the general public, at least that's been my experience with people coming in asking and requesting this piercing, don't have a pronounced enough ridge or the ridge is covered so much by the helix flap or it's not wide enough to do safely without having to worry about the piercing rejecting or migrating or having other issues. So. It is very anatomy specific. Also, the size of the jewelry is dictated by that. The placement of the jewelry and the piercing is also placed by that. 
in the style of jewelry that's going to work best in it. When somebody comes in and they ask for this particular piercing, I will generally go through a process of looking at the area, feeling around a little bit, getting acquainted with it, and then deciding what is going to work best while they initially heal out the piercing, which is usually curved barbell or ring. Very anatomy specific. So if you don't have the right anatomy and you go in somewhere and somebody says, oh, no, I'm not doing that, that's going to, no, that's not a good idea. Listen to your piercer. They may know something. If you feel like they're full of it, go see another piercer. And if they come in and they don't even look at the area and just go, sit down, let's go, they don't know what they're doing. Go somewhere else. And if somebody else tells you, yeah, you don't really have the anatomy for it, then you know, right? Number five, this is kind of the uh, wrapping up the consultation, what I would normally tell you if you came in and asked for this piercing. Um, kind of to give you an overview of what it's going to take to take care of this piercing and heal it out correctly. First off, average healing time, 8 to 12 weeks, during which time I'm going to suggest that you clean it at least once a day, the piercing area, not the piercing, but the piercing area, with antimicrobial germicidal soap. Um, twice a day if you feel like you've contaminated the area throughout the day. The other thing I'm going to suggest is doing hot compresses or soaks with warm water and sea salt for roughly about 10 minutes twice daily. Cross-contamination prevention. Common sense stuff your mom should have taught you. Wash your hands. Wash them before you touch the piercing. Don't overhandle the jewelry. The only time you really have any contact with the piercing is when you're cleaning the area and when you're doing soaks. The rest of the time, leave it alone. I know it's new and it's fun and exciting, but stop playing with it. Next thing, uh, no oral contact or exchanging of bodily fluids on or around the piercing until it heals. Self-explanatory. Keep, uh, keep your environment clean. Clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with the piercing. Also, do not submerge the piercing in bodies of water you can't control the quality of, which is pretty much everything but your own clean bathtub. No swimming. No swimming. Don't care where it's at. No swimming. Keep pets away from it. They are just germ magnets that like to uh, contaminate themselves and then contaminate everything else. Do not let them sleep in the bed with you, especially. I know they're warm and fuzzy and comfy but they are going to probably bring something into your bed that you don't want in there. Especially cats. And especially if they're pillow sleepers. Because they're going to be right there where the open wound is and that's going to cause issues. Cats also, the, the biggest thing is they like to play with things that are shiny. So that I would really highly advise not letting them sleep in the room with you. And now you know. The other thing is, is avoid contact with unclean objects. Uh, number one culprit with that, of course, is telephones. Uh, you also want to avoid contact with uh, sunglasses. Uh, make sure they're cleaned on a regular basis. If you wear, you wear cheaters like I do, clean those bows on a regular basis. Disinfect them just to be on the safe side. Um, also, uh, avoid contact with earbuds, uh, headphones, helmets, anything that may come in contact with the piercing needs to be disinfected or avoided during the healing process. If it's wintertime, stocking caps are a big trapper of everything. Not good. They should be cleaned on a regular basis. Um, I already covered sleeping and a lot of this other stuff, so I'm going to kind of skip over that part. There you go! Five advantages, five disadvantages, five pros, five cons of rook piercings. So I hope this video was educational to you and gave you a good overview and education of whether or not this piercing, this particular one, is going to be the right one for you. Um, if you learned something, please give me a thumbs up because that means you enjoyed it and you learned something. If you have questions or you feel like I brazed over something and didn't really explain it fully and it's just probably a whole worm of new ideas in your mind and you have to get them out, express them by making a comment. I usually answer uh, most comments uh, on a regular basis and continue to do so until I can't do it anymore. Um, subscribe. If you're one of those people that likes body piercing, tattooing, and body art in general, or body modifications, whatever they want to call it this week, 
we do educational videos on piercing, tattooing, and general body art on a regular basis, uh, posting anywhere from three to four videos a week. So go ahead and subscribe. If you would like to be notified when we do post new things, hit the notification bell. And until next time, if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see you for your piercing needs and the future.